Okay, so we are going to talk about the Benedict's test to test for reducing sugars. Um, let's just start with the, how we do the test for the reducing sugar itself. So if we start off with two tubes, okay, and in each we will add um, a solution to test for. So in one I will add some glucose, which is a reducing sugar. And in the other, I will add some water. Okay. And to both, I will add the same volume of Benedict's reagent. And we'll now put this in the water bath around 80 degrees C for about five minutes. And we are back. There we are. So if I can just bring that closer. After about five minutes, you can see that when the glucose was present, um, a nice brick red precipitate has formed um, and where we just used water there has been no color change at all. Okay, so that's the straightforward Benedict's test to check for the presence of a reducing sugar. However, um, what if you have a solution um, whose concentration is unknown and so the next part of the video we're going to discuss how to determine the concentration or how to quantify um, uh, reducing sugars. Okay, so this is useful where if you want to check the progress of a reaction, so you can take um, solutions out at different times and then check for the how much reducing sugar is there. Or if you have one unknown solution and you just want to check how much reducing sugar is in that um, solution or its concentration. So, how do we go about it? So, here we have the unknown solution, as you can see with the question mark right there. And I don't know the concentration of that solution. Okay, so how do I go about determining the concentration? What I need is a series of solutions of known concentrations. Okay, so I have 1%. Point five percent. Okay. Got point one percent. Point two five percent, and point zero five percent. Okay, so a range of solutions, all with reducing sugar in them, and with known concentrations. And what I do then is just repeat the Benedict's test for all of those solutions. Okay, so add known amounts of each. To each tube.
and then to all of my standard solutions I add the same volume of Benedict's reagent. Once that's done, we also then, we also repeat the test for our unknown solution in the same way. So we take the same volume of unknown test solution, Same volume of Benedict's reagent. And then again we to to stop the reaction we have to put it in the water bath. Again, 80 degrees Celsius for five minutes should do the trick. So after about five minutes in the water bath, here we have the results of our experiment. Um, as you can see, um, depending on the amount or the concentration of reducing sugar in our standard solutions, the reaction has, has gone further to completion. So um, the more reducing sugar you have, the more um, the copper has reacted. Um, to form the copper oxide and therefore the more colour change you get as the, as the percentage increases from 0.05% to 1%. Okay, now an, a very easy but still qualitative way to estimate um, the amount of reducing sugar in our test solution would be a simple comparison which, you know, which of these tubes is the colour is closest to. So I would estimate that it's around about between 0.05 and 0.1%, okay? Just in terms of simple color comparison. But that is not quantitative, as I said. That's still um, a subjective way to estimate that concentration. It's still depending on the observer's point of view of what, what color it's closest to. So a more accurate way of doing this would then be to make what's called a calibration curve of the... Um, absorbances of these solutions, so actually measuring uh, quantitatively um, the amount of reaction that's occurred in all these tubes, and I'll show you how, next how to do that. Okay, so what we are going to do is then to um, measure the uh, amount of copper ions left in solution, um, essentially that, that depends on absorbance or transmission of light of particular wavelengths. Now, what, what you can't do with these solutions is to measure absorbance or transmission because they are all different colours. Um, and for colorimetry, you need to be measuring the transmission or absorbance of a particular colour, i.e. a particular wavelength of light. So what we're going to do is to filter these solutions remove the precipitate that's formed and what we should have is a series of solutions which are all the same colour. So what I've done now is just to filter away um, all the precipitate, so I've, I've poured the um, solutions through a filter paper uh, and into a second test tube, so that removes all the red precipitate that's formed and what's left is um, in theory, pretty uh, just the remaining copper ions in solution. So we're just looking now at a more uniform set of solutions which, in which the only difference is the amount of copper that's left in the solution. And what you should see is that as the concentration of the glucose um, got higher and higher, more and more of the copper reacted in the standard set of solutions. This one is our test solution, and we're going to compare the colour of this solution to the others um, in our 
uh, once we do the colorimetry. So what we then do is to use a colorimeter and measure the uh, absorbance or the transmission of light through that solution. Now what you want to use is a red filter um, as the solution is blue. Okay? Um, right. Okay, so if we now use a colorimeter and measure the absorbance of the different solutions, um, we would then make a calibration curve using first our known concentrations of glucose. So for every concentration of glucose, I would get um, a particular absorbance. So the lower the percentage of glucose, um, I would get a higher absorbance because there's more unreacted copper in there. Okay. And then as the percentage of glucose would increase, um, that absorbance would go down. Okay, I'll get something like that. Um, right. Then I could make a curve through that graph. And that would be my calibration curve for my standard set of solutions. And then all I'd have to do to measure the concentration in my unknown solution is to also run that through the colorimeter, measure the absorbance, and I might get an absorbance around about um, there, for example. Just for example. Okay, so if it was there, if my absorbance was there, then I just use the calibration curve to, uh, with my known solutions to then determine the amount in the unknown solution. So I would do an interpolation, something like this, reading along the line. Wherever it hits the line, I then read downwards. And that would be my percentage of glucose in the unknown solution. I think that's about that. So remember, you can use this kind of um, quantitative test with pretty much any kind of reaction that shows a color change. Um, you can use it to measure the progress of the reaction. As more of the product is formed, you're going to get a change in color um, at different time points. Or you could, as I've done today, you could just use it to test an unknown solution against a series of known solutions from which you make a calibration curve. Good luck.